Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome, Cross Watchers. Happy to have you here. And for those of you who may be here for the very first time, welcome. Do come into the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Later on, I'll come back around and I will um, review comments and give you a proper welcome to the channel. So what I'm going to do here is pull from Healing Waters, Rebecca Campbell's deck. Um, it's brand new to me, so I'm exploring it for the first time. And let's activate this reading for you. I'll tell you why I'm using it too. Ooh, the sirens. I love this. Use your voice, expansion, freedom. Love the sirens there at the water's edge. Uh, we are in this first two weeks of the month of September is um, very watery because we have, we just had the new moon in um, Virgo, which is sort of kicking off the beginning of eclipse season. Even though it wasn't an, an eclipse, the full moon, which will hit on the 17th, is a, a full moon in Pisces. There's the water element with a lunar eclipse. That lunar eclipse is a south node eclipse. It's the nodes of the moon that create, create eclipses, and the south node is about the past, right? It's not where we're headed like the north node. It's what we've brought in from past lives, and if you don't buy into that, it's just past stuff that we got to release, and since the full moons are all about release, culmination, stuff that isn't serving us and we don't want to carry forward, it's going to be a big full moon. So I have decided to focus this series of readings on the soul contract um, that you are carrying with, with whoever it is you're here to watch about. Okay, so I'm pulling a spread that will look like my modified Celtic cross, but the positions of the cards are different. So I'll give you the meanings of that, and then we'll go back around and get the clarifiers. All right, here we go. Yes, nature of your soul contract, eh, soulmate. This is a partnership, but your main lesson here, <laughs> there's a need for you to kind of go with the flow. Um, there's a requirement so that some patients may be involved. Here's what you um, are already aware of, some conflict, some tension, maybe an outside source of interference on some level, shadow work that's still needed, uh, maybe around some sense of, um, you know, messages from the heart, apologies, messages of love, um, the past healing that you've already accomplished. Interesting, Ten of Swords, and the final step, Yes. Okay. So you're struggling with some communication for sure. The final step on the healing journey that would signal you're either ready to cut a cord if that's what's needed or to take this soul contract to the next level. So there's something interfering here. Um, there may be some tension, some arguments, some fights, or something getting in the middle of the smooth flow of things in this relationship and the shadow work is probably about um, messages from the heart that you know you letting the other person know how you feel um, apologies when they're necessary or messages of of love or care or adoration you know just the sweet stuff not a billboard just the sweet stuff now past healing with the Ten of Swords is telling me that you've already hit some really past ugly patches that you've rebounded from, that you've healed from. So you already have, and I think I even said this to Aries yesterday, you already have the receipts that you can recover. So there's some struggle here on the, with the small stuff, you know? And it's funny because I'm, I'm great with the big problems in life. It's the small stuff that I struggle with that really trips me up. So give me a major crisis and I'm Johnny on the spot, but give me like a little teeny thing and I'm a hot mess. That's what I'm seeing here because your main lesson is about going with the flow right? Some self-control and restraint, go with the flow, it'll all work out, the energies will come into flow and balance, 
And so that's what I think I'm seeing here. And the final step where you kind of know that healing journey is wrapping up and you're taking the contract to the next level is you'll just be able to talk about it and have a nice back and forth that, you know, doesn't feel um, like it's asking you to compromise who you are. And that's what you're getting. They use your voice for purposes of expansion and a sense of freedom. So it doesn't always have to go to <laughs> drama, drama, tragedy. Okay, so I feel like I'm seeing something very clearly here. Now, in the extended, we're going to get inside your person's head. All right, and we're going to see it from their point of view. But this is really from your point of view. And even if you're here as a cross watcher, this could still be your point of view. Just remember that. Okay, so let's clarify. High Priestess, King of Wands, Ace of Swords. There's something that is trying to find its way to you, some kind of insight, um, some awareness, some truth that's already within you, but you're not sensing it. So it's like your intuition, um, the High Priestess is like our intuition. And what I'm seeing here is you're being gifted. The aces are gifts from spirit. You're being gifted this awareness, this insight, but it's within your unconscious awareness. And so your intuition, it's almost like you have more um, of a sense of like this person should know. King of Wands. This person should just know. They should just sort of take the lead and there's some truth that's trying to find its way through. So maybe part of the lesson here with the um, temperance card is if you go with the flow a little bit, your intuition will get louder. And whatever this reality is, whatever this truth is, whatever this, oh, now I see, now I get it, now it's clear, will get louder. You'll be able to hear it, you'll be able to see it, you'll be able to grok it in some way. So I'm almost feeling like whoever this King of Wands is for you, um, you have some form of expectation that they should take the lead on something. They should, um, well, you know, King of Wands usually doesn't hesitate. That's the whole point. Um, I see it. I want it. I claim it. It's mine. They're forceful. They're, they, they, they just know. They, they're the ones that have the instinct and sort of um, take the lead. And so that's part of the problem here is that if you kind of don't put a lot out there on the other person, you can kind of sit back and let your intuition guide you to the, oh, I see how this works. And I need to be more patient. And I need to kind of sit with the energy and my intuition will be the guide to seeing things more clearly in the situation. So that's what I think is happening. So let's look at the five of wands because that's, the, that's what you are already aware of. There's conflict, there's tension. Oh, see? And this is what you want. Knight of Cups, Page of Cups. This is what you got. You're aware of this and you know some kind of a soft touch, some kind of um, a sincere message from the heart needs to be spoken to kind of draw out the, the sincerity or the vulnerability from your King of Wands here, but it's not happening. So, you know, we got a lot of things falling apart. Um, and not necessarily falling apart, but uh, feeling very unstable and unsustainable for the long haul. Um, so it, the tower's coming from the bottom of the deck. It doesn't necessarily mean you're having a tower moment. It means you're sensing what you already know is, yeah, this can't work for the long haul. This is just too much drama. Um, and so in the shadow work that's still required, we have that page of cups. Let's see. Seven of Cups. Two of, two of Wands, Two of Cups again. 
So it's about choosing the path and, and the two of wands asks you, well, what do you really want? Because the wands is our desires. Well, what do you really want? And here it is like, I don't know, I don't know. There are so many options, I'm not sure. Well, that's what the Page of Cups is about. It's about tapping into your heart. In a, you know, what's that small, sweet, vulnerable voice inside? What's the voice inside telling you in your heart that you really want in a small way, not the big, like I said, the grand gestures. It's not, it's not about that. There's something very small, sweet, tender that you want from this connection. What path is going to get you there? And so what it is that your shadow work is related to is moving through the seven cups of crazy that have taken you off that path, that have taken you away from that truth, that have taken you away from that truth. Because mm -hmm. you may very well be dealing with somebody who comes on very strong and very much in command, and you may give over a lot to this person. That's why you're getting the sirens, right? That's why you use your voice and expansion and freedom. It may be your time to kind of go with the flow a little bit so you can hear your voice and not by way of having to scream, okay? So you can hear the small, soft voice of your heart, of your soul, telling you what's really important to you. That's the shadow work that's left to be done. As we already know, you've been through some stuff, so you know when things aren't on solid ground, okay? Past healing, already accomplished. Mm -hmm. So you've been through, you know, the worst of times, and you made it through back to the best of times because you know how to take a stand for that happiness. Now, sometimes the Seven of Wands can be defensiveness, sometimes it can be resistance, and sometimes it's a little self-protective like a, oh, hell no, uh-uh. And I'm seeing it that way because of the King, Queen of Swords underneath. And the Queen of Swords, sort of like she can bifurcate stuff, right? She can kind of see what's happening and go through that painful moment, but then get real super laser focused. I, like, we have to have this conversation, checking our emotions at the door. We're just going to go through just the facts, ma'am. We're just going to have this conversation and put our cards face up on the table, no pun intended, and just get to the point. And I have a feeling that that's what happened. So you have this ability and you have the receipts to prove that you've already had this healing moment where you were able to get through the worst of times because you took a stand for what you wanted and what you wanted was the happiness which would bring, you know, the healing would come from that, from taking a stand for the happiness that you knew could exist in this connection. And your method was one of balance, diplomacy, practicality, being pragmatic, being level-headed, giving voice, coming in peace with no hidden agendas, Right? It's a side to your personality that stood up, that stood, took a step forward, that sort of uh, kind of suppressed <laughs> the restless energy of the moment and got things back on track. But it didn't overall solve the problems because that's what you know. It didn't really solve the problems. So now, how will you know, right? The final step of the healing journey that signals you're moving on with your soul contract is this Eight of Wands. So let's see that. Lovely. Yeah. When you can sort of go back to the scene of the crime um, where it hurt the most, where there was the most devastation, disappointment, um, the regrets of the, the past, the, the mistakes that were made, the sense of grief, things maybe that you didn't even really allow yourself to fully feel, um, maybe how it even impacted your person, because once you hear that, it dredges up a lot of stuff, right? 
and when I did the um, when I did the reading for the I can't I kind of think it was the um, the new moon reading uh, I believe at the end of the new moon reading I talked about what's likely to come before that full moon um, and yeah and you know obviously if we're going into a, a, an eclipse and we're going to be looking at the past to let it go well there's the looking at the past and so it sort of brings the pain back up and that's what i'm seeing here is there there is some healing available to you by way of this communication and look at it it's it's like bookends of the communication sort of supporting this is your unconscious awareness this is your conscious awareness understanding that it's coming from the deep wells within you as well as right here in your conscious awareness holding space for it in all aspects of your energetic field so that the healing can fully take place and then it can be released so this is really beautiful um I'm going to give you a little bit of a secondary thought now that I'm I'm toward the end here. I see this I almost see this high priestess a little differently now. It's not just about intuition. I'm feeling like there are things you don't say cuz she doesn't speak. That's why she's at card about intuition. But, you know, she's associated with the moon and she's also associated with like secrecy and things we don't say. Right? So I'm almost feeling like there's a part of you that um, often thinks this person should kind of sort of just know what you're thinking or feeling, even though you don't, you know, you don't say it, they should kind of guess my mother was this way. <laughs> like, well, don't you know how I'm feeling? <laughs> like that like you should know. And it's, there's like this Ace of Swords there is already in you. You already have this, this gift spirits giving you of like, just look at it, just, just see it, just get this for one second that this person is not a mind reader. They are a lot of fabulous things, but they cannot read your mind. And so that's what I'm feeling your, your main lesson is about is go with the flow, yes. But be patient because this person is unable to kind of just magically guess what it is that you're thinking and feeling. And so since part of what's happening here is there's a need for more communication, even on the smallest and simplest of levels, more expression from you in the smallest and simplest of ways, that is the shift I want to add is that your patience is a different kind of patience. It's a more of, yeah, go with the flow if this person doesn't kind of get what you're trying to say right off the bat. Okay, fair, sound fair? Good. All right, so um, in the extended, what I'm going to look at for your king of wands, that's what I'm going to call them for now, is their perception of you. That ought to be interesting. Their feelings um, for you and their intentions toward you. Also, what are they getting from you, right? What's, what's like the payoff? What are they getting from you? Um, also, uh, physical fulfillment levels. If you happen to have a connection that has been in 3D, what's the physical fulfillment level? And where's the connection headed? We'll look at all of that. And um, if you've been enjoying the readings and you haven't yet already, please do subscribe. That allows me to stay here and do what I love most and what I am called to do, which is to serve you and to bring you these messages. So that is my ask. It doesn't cost a thing. It's our energetic exchange. Thank you so much. Here we go. Temperance is Sagittarian energy. High Priestess is the moon. We have King of Wands is Leo. Up here we have Page of Cups. I mean, Knight of Cups, my mistake, is Pisces. Page of Cups is out twice. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. And the Tower is Mars, which rules the sign of Aries. We have over here the Sun, um, which rules Leo. Queen of Swords is Libra. The Star is 
um, Aquarius. So that's what I have for you. I am headed to the extended now. The links are below. I said links, it's plural. There are a couple options. Be sure you know what it is you're getting because one is like a monthly renewal. The one and done is option number two. And then there's an all access pass. If you're interested in a private reading, there is always a link in the description box below that will take you to my booking page and there are spots available. Thanks again. Bye for now.